They're not the first to have carried this burden. For while today marks the end of a particular struggle that has lasted almost two decades, this is a moment more than two centuries in the making. There will never be a full accounting of the heroism demonstrated by gay Americans in service to this country. Their service has been obscured in history. It's been lost to prejudices that have waned in our own lifetimes. But at every turn, at every crossroads in our past, we know gay Americans fought just as hard, gave just as much to protect this nation and the ideals for which it stands. There can be little doubt there were gay soldiers who fought for American independence, who consecrated the ground at Gettysburg, who manned the trenches along the Western Front, who stormed the beaches of Iwo Jima. Their names are etched into the walls of our memorials. Their headstones dot the grounds at Arlington. And so, as the first generation to serve openly, in our armed forces, you will stand for all those who came before you. And you will serve as role models to all who come after you. And I know that you will fulfill this responsibility with integrity and honor, just as you have every other mission with which you've been charged. <clears throat> and you need to look no further than the service men and women in this room, distinguished officers, like former Navy Commander Zoe Dunn. <laughs> Marines, Marines like Eric Hall. Jonathan Hopkins, who yeah. led a platoon into northern Iraq during the initial invasion, quelling an ethnic riot, earning a bronze star with Val. Woo! He was, uh, he was discharged only to receive emails and letters from his soldiers saying they'd known he was gay all along. <laughs> <laughs> Thought that he was the best commander they ever had. 